Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm checking out the Lantian LT105 Pro. This is a brushed micro and I don't usually show the box that a product comes in but this one is pretty neat and also tells me the specs as well which is very handy for a reviewer. So you can see there that it is a 105 millimeter frame, it weighs 40 grams and that will be without the battery. The carbon fiber arms are one millimeter thick and the battery is a 1S but it's not tick then, we'll take a look at that in a moment. So they are 8.5 millimeter motors and a 60 millimeter propeller there, so quite a big propeller for a brushed model. So the camera is 600 TV lines, video transmitter is 32 channel and 25 milliwatts, an all-in-one camera and then the flight controller is the SP Racing F3 Evo and it has clean flight installed on it and I have gone ahead and flashed beta flight and it was quite an old version of clean flight now this is actually the plug and fly version but you can get it in all these different options you can see that mine isn't ticked but let me show you the reason why I'm showing you the box because it is pretty cool so we are given this sheet here and it's got all of the frequencies so in order to change the frequencies on the camera you have to remove this canopy here and I will show that a little bit later but look at this box it is really nicely packaged so first of all we have got this which I think is fantastic you don't usually get something like this with a model and it is a five port micro lozzy one cell charger you can see it just plugs into a USB cable there uh, it doesn't mention what the amp rating is usually 0.5 amps though, so 500 milliamp and this is really good and you've got these lights on here and they go out when the battery's charged so look at this package, I really like it, so you get given two batteries which is nice, now they are 500 milliamp one cell batteries and they are Lantian brand, you can see there 500 milliamp 25C micro lozzy and as I say you get two of those and they are very nice indeed and then we have got the quadcopter itself and it's a really smart quadcopter the only thing that I don't really like about it is these stickers these Lantian stickers here over the arms you can see they have the motors labeled as well but they are coming off and I can see those coming off eventually there but yeah really nice build you'll notice we don't have any antennas coming out of the top there so I will take the canopy off in a bit but this camera here it has a sleeve dipole antenna and the receiver also fits under there as well really nice low profile but we don't have any of the antennas sticking out of here so we will be limited when it comes to the range but we do have the USB connector coming out of the back there as well as the micro lozzy and something I really do like about this model is the motor holders they come right up to the top of the motor and also protect the wires underneath as well so that is very nice and we have these nice red propellers as well so let's take a look what else you get you are given a USB cable we have some propellers and also a little screwdriver as well and that is good because you have to undo these screws here in order to get the canopy off and I needed to do that because they sent me the plug and fly version so I had to solder my own receiver on that and I tell you there's not a lot of room to do that either but I'll show you how I did that. I actually borrowed a receiver off the QX80, so a little S-Bus receiver there and I'll show you how I soldered that up. Also got a rubber band on the underneath here as well for the battery to go under and you are given a load of spares of that as well. So let me take the canopy off and show you what is underneath. Okay, so I've removed all of the screws and this canopy just should lift off nicely and you can see that everything's packed in really tightly. This is the receiver that I have used here and that just solders onto here. So you can see, I've just made these little tiny 
solder joins there and then that goes on to this S bus receiver and that fits in really tightly then you can see there that we have got this little sleeve dipole antenna that is soldered onto here and that is going to sit flat so we are going to be limited when it comes to the signal of the video now the camera does look very similar to that of the QX series it's got these little dip switches on the back here and like I say you get given a chart for that so you can get the right frequency and band and so this is the SP Racing F3 Evo and as you can see there there's no buzzer attached which is a shame because this is a small model so if it gets lost in long grass it could take you some time to find it. I usually set my DVR going to help me find it but as this is an SP Racing F3 Evo you can attach a buzzer to it just there however with this low profile canopy and the receiver, I don't think one would fit, so you could either drill a hole out the top of here or just not have the canopy on at all, but then it looks a little bit messy. But just looking at these solder joins of the motors there, those are all done quite nicely. And these stickers here, they do look like they're going to come off, but there is a another bit of tape holding the wires in so even if those do come off there it doesn't really matter I guess that is just to advertise the Lantian brand there but anyways I'm going to put this canopy back on in a moment and fly it and I have set up my Tyrannis well, to have Tyrannis. a model so I'll just show you that, so I've called it the LT105 and if I page over here, so I'm using a D8 receiver and then if I page over, we'll just go to the inputs, I've set channel 5 to arm on a two position switch channel 6 to the mode and then repeated that in the mixer as well for the output. You'll notice I don't have one for the buzzer because it does not have one. So as I mentioned I have installed Betaflight on this. Now I'm not going to go through all the setup because it's a little bit samey for my other videos. However I did get a really nice tune out of it so I will put the PIDs here and you can copy those if you like because I got a really nice smooth tune out of it. Anyway, let's go and take it for a fly and see how it performs. Okay, let's go for a takeoff with this guy. Starting off in angle mode. Nice sunny day. But it is windy. Let's go for the punch. Not bad at all. No vibrations at all. Feels smooth which is a good sign see if I can get it close into the camera without the wind blowing it into me I like this red color really neat model trying to compensate for the wind though so it's not very level but you can fly it in this wind no problem let's try acro oh yeah nice that's fun it's flying smoothly with this beta flight tune Nice back clips. Of course, there's no buzzer on this. So, if it gets lost in the long grass, I'm scuppered. But it is a nice red colour, so hopefully, I might be able to see it. Plenty of power to pull out on manoeuvres. I'm not seeing many wobbles either but that will be shown more on the FPV feed. I'm pleasantly surprised it's flying really nicely. 
been having a lot of problems lately with manufacturers giving us duff propellers and vibrations. Not with this one. <laughs> Loads of fun. Too much fun. <laughs> really like flying acro line of sight these days quite relaxing flying this one quite predictable right out let's come in for a landing and I'll try some FPV with it. So here's some footage taken from the Fat Shark HD3 DVR. And I just want a bit of feedback actually from you guys while we take a look at this footage. So in this particular video, I didn't go through all of the beta flight setup. I feel like I do that too often. But if it is useful for you or for some people, then let me know if you think I should do that every time. And I will do, I just thought with this particular model, it was a very similar setup to all of the other brushed quads that I have set up in beta flight. So as I said, I just gave you the pids, but let me know on that. As for this quadcopter, it flies really nice FPV. I managed to get it tuned really nicely, and I was flying it a little bit erratically just to push the boundaries of this quadcopter, and it still flew for 4 minutes 30, so I think if you flew it around a little bit slower, you would probably get a 5 minute flight time, or over a 5 minute flight time, should I say. But yeah, you can see there that I'm getting quite a bit of breakup and that is that sleeve dipole antenna there. If you did drill a hole in the top of this and put the antenna vertical, then you will get a much greater reception from it. And it's going to be better in a crash than a cloverleaf. So I didn't think it was that bad though. Actually, you can see that I'm keeping it in probably around 80 meters or so. No further than that. I think the video would break up too much but as I say if you messed around modifying it then you would get more range out of it but yeah it's a nice quadcopter shame it doesn't have that buzzer as I mentioned it seems to be a standard these days and of course we don't have an on-screen display either and that's becoming a standard as well but I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one it's a nice flyer and I'll leave you with a little bit of flying so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers